Hi. In this video, we'll explore some of what you can do with the Spine Unity runtime by checking out the example scenes that come with it. I'll start with a Unity project that already has the Spine Unity 4.0 runtime installed using the Unity package. You'll find the Spine and Spine examples folders under Assets in the project window. In the Spine examples folder, you'll find the Getting Started folder. It contains six example scenes that walk you through the basic runtime components and how they're used. The first scene demonstrates the skeleton animation component. The skeleton animation component is the heart of the Spine Unity runtime. It allows you to add a spine skeleton to a game object, animate it, react to animation events, and more. A skeleton animation component requires a reference to a skeleton data asset that provides the skeleton data and texture atlas. After exporting JSON or binary skeleton data and a texture atlas from Spine, a skeleton data asset can be created by dragging and dropping the files into the project window. Drag a skeleton data asset into the scene or hierarchy window to create a skeleton game object. Besides skeleton animation, there are two other types of skeleton game objects, skeleton graphic and skeleton mechanism. We'll look at those later. A skeleton data asset can be used for multiple skeleton game objects in your scenes. The data is loaded into memory only once and is shared by the skeleton game objects. For example, if you change the texture atlas or an animation or other skeleton data for a skeleton data asset, all the game objects that reference that skeleton data asset will change. Once imported, you can update the skeleton by simply overriding the modified file. You can quickly see the appearance of animations in the preview that appears at the bottom of the inspector window when the skeleton data asset is selected. Sometimes Unity collapses the preview, so if you don't see it, then it just needs to be resized. The second example scene demonstrates basic animation code using the c -sharp API. When playing the scene, Spineboy will play the walk, run, idle and turn animations. Footstep events will trigger a sound accordingly. You can inspect the example script SpineBeginner2 component that is attached to the Spineboy game object. The skeleton animation provides an animation state instance that keeps track of the animations that will be applied. Animation state has the concepts of tracks, where animations with higher track numbers are applied on top of lower tracks. The example code demonstrates usage of the set animation and add animation methods. Set animation sets the animation for a track. It has three parameters, track index, the animations to be set, and whether the animation loops. By default, the animation starts playing from the beginning. If it loops, then it repeats until another animation is set. If it doesn't loop, it keeps applying the last frame of the animation until another animation is set or the track is cleared. Set animation replaces any animation that is already playing or queued on that track. When a track changes from one animation to another, the mix duration determines how much time is used to crossfade between animations. This is called mixing and helps avoid abrupt changes when setting a new animation. You can set the mix duration between pairs of animations in the mix settings of the skeleton data asset. The default mix duration is used for any animation pairs that don't have a mix duration set explicitly. Add animation cues an animation to play after other animations. Like set animation, add animation takes a track index, animation, and loop boolean. It also takes a delay that determines when the queued animation replaces the current animation for the track. When the delay is positive, it's the time from the start of the previous animation to when the queued animation starts. For example, if you set an idle animation, then add a run animation with a delay of one second, 
Idle will play for one second, then it will be replaced by run. When the delay is zero, which is most common, then the queued animation will start mixing in so that it completes the mix when the previous animation has finished. For example, if your idle animation has a duration of one second, then adding a run animation with a delay of zero and a mix duration of 0.2 will start mixing in run when idle is at 0.8 seconds, so that the mixing is complete when the idle animation finishes. When the delay is negative, it's just like when the delay is zero, except the start time is moved back by that much. For example, if the delay was minus 0.2, then run will start mixing at 0.6 seconds instead of 0.8. If the delay is longer than the previous animation's duration, then the animation will either loop or display the last frame until the next animation is set. In some cases, you may want to use a mix duration of zero, so the next animation starts immediately without any mixing. You can further customize how an animation is played using the track entry object returned by set animation and add animation. For example, you can set the mix duration on the track entry instead of setting in the mix settings or to overwrite the mix settings. The track entry has many properties to customize playback such as timescale to slow down or speed up the animation, animation start to begin playback in the middle of the animation and much more. Let's return to the example scene. You may want to place sounds at specific points in your animation, like when Spine Boy's foot hits the ground. To do this, you set up events in Spine, then you write a little bit of code to play the sounds in Unity. Open the script called Handle Event with Audio Example attached to the Sound Game Object. This code shows how to register an animation state event callback. Your method will be called whenever an event occurs in any animation. You can also set a callback on a track entry for a specific animation. Spineboy's walk and run animations have event keys named footstep. When the script sees an event occurred, it displays the name of that event in the console and checks if it's the footstep event. If so, it plays a footstep sound. Beside the event name, each event key can have an integer, float, and string value. You can use these to decide what to do. For example, you could decide which sound to play, how many times to play the sound, adjust the pitch, or take some other action. Events aren't limited to playing sounds. You can also use them to show or hide particle effects, deal damage, change which skin is visible, or anything else you can think of. The third scene demonstrates how you can play multiple animations on top of each other by using animation state tracks. It also shows how to use animation reference assets as an alternative to animation name strings. When playing the scene, the walk animation will play in a loop. At the same time, the gun grab and gun keep animations are playing on top of the walk animation. See the example script called Raptor attached to the Raptor skeleton game object. This script sets a walk animation on track zero and gun grab and gun keep alternate at random intervals on track one. Gun grab grabs the gun from the holster and gun keep puts it back in the holster. Since these are played on a higher track, they override part of the pose from the walk animation. When you set an animation with loop equal to false, the animation will apply the pose of the last frame until another animation is set. This is why the gun grab animation keeps the gun out after the animation duration. The fourth scene demonstrates how you can set up a platformer character following the model view controller software design pattern. While this setup might not be ideal for your game projects, it serves as an inspiration for how input, game logic, and visualization may be separated into components. When playing the scene, you can control the Spine Boy character with the WASD keys, spacebar, and mouse input. 
Alternatively, you can control it via a gamepad. You can inspect the script called Spineboy Beginner Input attached to the player input game object. It is the controller in the model view controller design pattern. It modifies the state of the model represented by the Spineboy Beginner Model component on the player Spineboy game object. Visualization of the model is performed by the Spineboy Beginner View component on the View Spineboy game object. The crosshair that is displayed when the mouse clicks is a part of the Spineboy skeleton. Spineboy is set up to look at the crosshair bone using the IK constraints when the aim animation is played. So you can control the angle of the upper body by moving the crosshair bone. The script called Spineboy Target Controller on the View Spineboy Game Object overrides the local position of the bone called crosshair to the mouse position every frame. When setting the shoot animation, attachment threshold is set on the track entry. Attachment threshold determines if attachment timelines are applied when an animation is being mixed out. By default, it is zero, so attachment timelines are not applied when mixing out. When the shot animation is played, the sequential images of the muscle effect are displayed. If the shot animation starts to mix out mid-animation, the muscle effect disappears. We can see this by starting and stopping the playback of the shoot animation in the preview view of the spine editor. We want to see the muscle effect even when shoot is being mixed out, so we set the attachment threshold to 1. As previously mentioned, when an animation was set with loop equal to false, it will keep applying the last frame until another animation is set. If you are done applying an animation and want it to mix back to the setup pose, you can use Add Empty Animation. Add Empty Animation takes a track index, mix duration, and delay. Delay works just like Add Animation. You can reset the pose smoothly by setting a mix duration. After the mix duration, the skeleton will have the setup pose and the empty animation is cleared from the track. The fifth example scene demonstrates the use case of a platformer with typical animations such as jump, run, fall, and land. It has particles and sound effects and also shows how spine meshes can be used to cast shadows in Unity. When playing the scene, you can control the hero character with the WASD keys and spacebar. Alternatively, you can control it via a gamepad. You can inspect the example script called Basic Platformer Controller on the player game object. It shows how to use Unity input to change between a character's states. When the state changes, the Skeleton Animation Handle example script sets the appropriate animation for the new state. The Hero Effects Handler example script is used to play a sound and spawn particle systems. If the current state has an animation for transition, this script plays the transition first, then the target animation. The getCurrent method returns the track entry for the animation that is currently being applied. This is used to determine if there is a transition animation between the current animation and the next animation. Skeleton game objects added to the scene using Skeleton Animation or Skeleton Mechanism use the Mesh Renderer component, so they will cast shadows onto other 3D objects by default. Note that 2D objects like a sprite do not receive shadows. If you don't want to display shadows, turn off Cast Shadows in the Lighting section of the Mesh Renderer component. The default shader does not receive shadows of other objects, so if you want your skeleton to receive shadows, please use the pixel lit shader. Note that the pixel lit shader requires C spacing and enabling add normals or fixed normals in the material. If you move the hero to the stairs on the left side, 
you can see that the landing positions of the left and right feet change based on the step's height. This is achieved by programmatically changing the position of the feet IK bones at runtime. A hierarchy of skeleton utility bone components allows you to override certain bone positions of your animation. There is an example scene named Skeleton Utility Ground Constraint where this component is demonstrated. The Skeleton Utility Ground Constraint example component calculates the target height and uses the Skeleton Utility Bone component to adjust the bone position accordingly. For details and requirements on how to automatically set up the hierarchy, please see the Spine Unity documentation page. The sixth scene demonstrates the skeleton graphic component and how it can be integrated into a Unity UI. Play the scene and scroll through the panels to discover Spine Boy below. Skeleton graphic is similar to the skeleton animation component, except it renders to a Unity UI canvas. This allows you to render your skeletons in your UI. Due to limitations of the canvas renderer, skeleton graphic is limited to only one texture by default. While you can enable multiple canvas renderers in the advanced section, it is better avoided where possible for performance reasons. This scene also shows how bone follower graphic components can be used to attach any UI component to follow bone positions. They can be found on the detached bone follower graphic and child bone follower graphic game objects. If you select another bone in the bone name select box, you will see that the text label can be changed to follow a different bone. The skeleton mechanism component is another alternative to the skeleton animation component, but there is no example scene for skeleton mechanism. You can simply create a skeleton mechanism instance by dragging and dropping the skeleton data asset into the scene, and then selecting skeleton mechanism from the menu. This will create a mechanism controller asset automatically, which you can edit as normally using the animator window. Note that skeleton mechanism comes with some limitations regarding mixing and requires additional keys in your animations. For details, see the Spine Unity documentation page. Due to these limitations, we recommend to use skeleton animation instead whenever possible. While we have looked through the six scenes in the Getting Started folder, there are still many more example scenes in the Spine Examples folder so let's quickly look through the most important example scenes. The Mix and Match Skins project shows how to combine multiple skins into one to implement a wardrobe setup. Pressing Done will optimize the skin and attachments. It generates a new skin and new attachments mapped to a new texture atlas that is repacked from the texture regions of the original attachments. Mix and Match Equip shows how to update the look of a skeleton with Unity sprite images and repack the textures using only the images used. Per Instance Material Properties shows how to change the material for each skeleton instance. Blend Modes shows the correct settings to apply each blend mode. Multiply, Screen and Additive. Skeleton Render Separator shows how to split the skeleton render into parts using this Skeleton Render Separator component. Sprite Shaders shows a lit sprite shader example that uses normal maps. Skeleton Utility Ragdoll demonstrates the example components Skeleton Ragdoll and Skeleton Ragdoll 2D, which can be used when you want to turn an animated skeleton into a puppet-like ragdoll. Sprite Mask and Rec Mask 2D shows how to mask a skeleton using Sprite Mask or Rec Mask 2D. Outline Shaders 
demonstrates the outline shader feature, which automatically detects and renders outlines of the skeleton with a colored border. To learn more about each component and the example scripts, please refer to the Spine Unity Runtime documentation and the actual example scenes and comments in the scripts. Feel free to directly use the example components in your game project. Typically, you will base your own scripts on code from the example components, reusing and modifying them to fit your project. If you modify an example component, be careful not to later accidentally override your modifications by re-importing the Unity package. Besides the examples and documentation, you will find even more information on the Spine form. You can post your questions on the form if anything still remains unclear. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you for watching.